Here is a video on how to set the valve timing on a Rolls-Royce 2025 engine. This particular car is an R series, meaning it's a 1930. This video and this method, method of instruction can be applied to Phantom 2, 20 horsepower, 2530 and also 2530 Wraith. So the first step in conducting this operation is to go and look at the flywheel. So to do this, we walk into the car and we look at the flywheel. So as you will see here, I already have it in the correct position. The pointer is dead on IC. IC stands for inlet valve number one cylinder closing. Now this is quite important that it's closing and not closed. I'll come on to this point slightly later. If you don't have your flywheel in this position, what you'd have to do is take a bar or some form of lever and what you can do is spin it on these nuts and, and, and there's eight of them in there. And what you need to do when you're doing such an operation is to go back to the engine and you take the spark plug off the number one cylinder. What you then do is start turning the flywheel over with someone stood here and what you do is you take it to that IC position after one revolution. You then put a screwdriver down there and hold it, you do not turn the engine. What you should find is that the screwdriver sits quite a long way down to set the valve clearances, also known as tappet clearances. What we do is we set all of these valves to four foul clearance. This is done by removing the tappet chest covers and what you do is you have a lock nut on the bottom and a just nut on the top. You then have another person with a feeler gauge between the top of the valve and the rocker arm. You adjust it such that you have quite a drag on the feeler gauge but such that it isn't biting. And remember to do this for all three well, sorry, for all six. And then we move to the front ones. Now this is absolutely imperative when you are setting valve timing on a pre-war Rolls-Royce. A particular and applies to any model. So what we have to do is set number one cylinder, inlet valve and exhaust valve to 20 thou clearance. Now this is applicable to this car because that's what it says on the flywheel. If you have a Phantom 2, uh, for example, it might be slightly different. So you must read TSD 2066, and that is the valve timing and ignition data provided by Rolls-Royce. And by looking at this, you can find exactly every single piece of information that you need for your car. Make sure you read this before doing anything valve timing or ignition related. So, we set the 20 thou clearance using the same method that we use for setting the 4 thou clearance on these valves. Once we are happy that we have obtained 20, 20 thou valve clearance, we then come to the front of the vehicle. Now you will see here that there's four gears and some form of inertia damper. This is a distributor drive. This is the idler gear. This is the dynamo drive. Most importantly, this is the bronze camshaft gear. This gear spins in an anti-clockwise direction when the engine's running. Remember this. So, first of all, we take this damper off the nose of the crankshaft. You don't need a specialist tool to do this. What you need is a 34mm spanner and a form of chisel or screwdriver and hammer to remove the starting dog captive nut. This is left hand thread so you knock it that way and you completely remove it and then you turn the starting dog anti-clockwise and what you will find with the covers off and with someone spragging the crankshaft from the flywheel this damper will start to pull itself out. You then remove it completely and then you look back at this bronze gear 
Now I'm just going to put a quick note in that you must set the valve clearances here when these valves on number six cylinder are on the rock. Very important. If you don't do this, you will not be able to conduct the operation correctly and you'll have an ill running engine. So we look down at this bronze gear. You will see that my gear has two centre punch dots. Now this is for a very important reason and I'll come to this in a minute too. What I do now, now that I have IC on the flywheel, I come to the number one inlet valve. And what you will find, and what you should be able to do, is to turn the push rod. But, you shouldn't be able to turn it freely, it should be tight, like this one here. It's a tight turn. It's not a free turn, it's just closing. This is imperative. If you get this wrong, again, you'll be out. If you're a tooth out here, you'll be over two and a half degrees out on the, on the flywheel. You'll have an ill-running engine and you could cause catastrophic damage. So be very careful. What we now do is remove the damper, which I shall do so now. Once the damper is removed, we move the camshaft gear wheel until we're able to spin the push rod on the number one inlet valve. I haven't done this purely out of uh, what I've been doing so far. Just ignore it. We align this position and ideally you'd have a wire pointer pointing at one of these gears where you have that valve closing position. Now, the next thing you have to do is turn the camshaft gear in a clockwise direction by two teeth, two bronze gear teeth. Why do you have to do this? When you insert the crankshaft damper, as I will do so in a minute, these gears rotate. The reason for this is that we have a helical gear arrangement. When you have two helical gears, they exert a force on each other. If you have spurred gears, they wouldn't exert a force on each other, they'd just go straight in. But because you have that helical effect, as they join up together and you put the two in, you get a movement. This movement can put your valve timing out again. So what do we have to do? We rotate this camshaft gear by two teeth, clockwise, from the marked position, and now I suggest putting some tipex there, because of the helical drive offset. Now what is this? This is what it is you're about to see. As I insert the damper, these gears move and you'll hear a, a click. That's just the damper sitting on the crankshaft nose and hitting the Woodruff key. Now that your gears have moved, the next job is to take a spanner and tighten up the starting dog nut and what you will see is that the, the crankshaft slipper drive will start to engage and bite and then it will actually draw in. And I'll film this from above now. Here's my spanner. I fit it onto there and what you'll see is it draws in. The next step is to wind it all the way in and as you feel it get very tight, stop. Put someone on the flywheel to sprag it. Hold it in position. Then, tighten the captive nut first. Remember it's left hand thread, so you tighten it that way. Then, span it on. Check that the crankshaft is spragged. And you knock this with a firm whack with a with <laughs> so it's suggested in in the book by R Haynes that you use a two pound mallet to knock it with a fair whack and this will then lock the slipper drive into position once this is locked in your gears are all locked together now what we do is go back to the flywheel 
we ascertain that we're still on IC and we check that we have the position on the push rod, that we can feel it with a tough and tight push rod tip. The next step is to turn the flywheel. Do not turn the engine from the front. If you turn the engine from the front, the actual slip of the slipper drive will put out your timing. So don't do this. Turn the flywheel and you'll find there are three other positions for checking your valve timing. These are in the opening, exhaust valve opening, exhaust valve closing. Check all of these positions and at exactly the point marked by the arrow should be able to feel a tight turn of the push rod. If you have this, then put the timing cover on, everything else, turn the engine over by hand, make sure you feel no resistance. And what I suggest you do then is use a compression gauge. Check that you have around 80 psi of compression. Then in here, insert a vacuum gauge. Then what you will do is run the engine. What we are looking for is 20 inches of mercury steady. And this means your valve timing is set correctly. Your engine is pulling a good vacuum, which means your carburetor is working. And hey presto, you've completed it. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And I hope this video has given you an insight into what goes into setting valve timing on an engine like this.